Good morning, Jocelyn. How are you today? Hey. Hello. Hello. Morning. Hi. Oh, these usual suspects so far. <laughs> How's everybody today? I made it on the first try. Yay! <laughs> I feel like such a tech guru now. <laughs> no idea why my name is my email address, but we're not going there, so. <laughs> How's everybody doing? We'll go thumbs up, thumbs down to everybody. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, thumbs up. Uh, half a. Okay. Anybody? Yeah, or the, I'm that? not sure. <laughs> uh oh. So, how, what's going on? Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Paula. <clears throat> oh, Paula, oh, that's so connecting. Since everybody's still waking up, it looks like you have a lot of <laughs> darkness on your side of the world. And I have morning rain, oh my God. but sunshine, sort of, -ish. daylight. Daylight on the East Coast. Again. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if I can follow up on your question from last time about accessibility and so forth, um, Hi, Michelle. I'm curious. We're just chit chatting. <laughs> just give me one sec. The dogs are barking. I'm going to get try to give them something to. Tone that down a little. No, no problem. We're just chit chatting. <laughs> what was that, Bridget? I'm, I'm curious. Um, we were talking in the the small groups last time about accessibility and things that are mm -hmm. hindrances to something like open water swimming or swimming in general. And I'm I'm curious. I feel like very much the oddball in the group because I don't do the morning masters workout. I don't train with a team. I am a solo swimmer to my core. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and I'm wondering if there's anybody else out there who does not feel like you have to swim every day all year to do marathon <laughs> swimming because I spent probably 10 years being a seasonal swimmer. I've only had winter access to swimming for the past three winters. Mm -hmm. And Oh. I think that there are so many preconceived notions, even within the sport, that it, it makes it, I think, more yeah, off-putting to those outside. This, yeah, you've just hit on a big, um, uh, uh, an area for me that I, I, I mean, I guess I, I think it, it's important. I, I, I try to stress, as a coach, I try to stress form. Um, right, and, right. And touches oh, I on do the too, water. absolutely. Yeah, but um, but I don't swim every day. I, I mean, especially I've had two kids in the last six right. years, and um, I know and that's so re made, but that's, reinvented my whole. <laughs> there is no better training. Um, yeah, yeah. No, there is no better abdominal workout than being a mother. I'm sorry. It's, just the way it goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the training session that never ends. Um, right. yeah, yeah. But the marathon for me, never ends. <laughs> what I heard from coaches. And what I continually hear from people, and I'm trying to think, it came up even when I was listening to your Sarah Thomas interview yesterday, which was really good. And she's always, she's always cool. Um, if somebody said to her, I want to do an English Channel double, and it seems like it's coming out of the blue, the general consensus I've come across, like when I wanted to swim Lake George, Lake George is 32 miles for those who are not familiar with Lake George. It's a significant piece of water, but... I have the home team advantage. I was able to find a crew flexible enough to have variable start dates, which is not the case with the channel. It is not the case with Manhattan. It's not the case with the big yeah. organized swims. And I knew that an organized swim of that magnitude is not ever probably going to work for me because I'm pokey. Um, <laughs> and, and the timing on something like SCAR to deal with SCAR as an organized swim, the temperatures are such that I'm still dealing with just getting off ice. Yeah. So acclimating to SCAR at that time, I mean, if it was in the fall, it'd be great, but, yeah. but it's not. So yeah. I'm not sure if I'll be able to wrap my mind around that. But one thing that was said to me when I mentioned swimming the lake was, oh, well, you can't just start with that. You, you should do the channel first. <laughs> and I was doing this in the context of trying to find crew. Yeah. And yeah. if I can't find crew, 
in my home lake area where nobody has to travel and buy airplane tickets and get hotels and stuff, if I can't find a crew where I am, how am I going to get a crew for something like Lake Memphremagog, the English Channel? And the guy, the one person actually said to me, well, we're heading down to Tampa to start the season down there. You should come down here. And I'm thinking warm salt water versus cold spring fed lake water. I'm not seeing the advantage here. Yeah. yeah. And I just swam. <laughs> and I swam in the pool because I got, I had access to it. But when my lake was available to me, I started swimming when it was about 58 degrees and I started doing two and three miles a day. Mm -hmm. And I just swam and my shoulders don't care whether I'm swimming the channel or Lake Memphremagog or whether there's a race official. I put yeah. in the miles mm -hmm. and it wasn't an official curriculum vitae. Mm -hmm. um, but many people looked at the fact that I swam Lake George with utter shock. Mm -hmm. But in July, leading up to it, I swam 140 miles in training, just going to the lake with a lunchbox on a lawn chair. And mm -hmm. seriously, this was before I was willing to swim by myself, and I was staying inside the ropes and everything. It was, it was ghastly, 12 times oh. back and forth across my beach to make a mile. But oh, wow. I think that we get very wrapped up in, well, you have to do this event first, as opposed to the miles. I did the miles, mm. they just weren't official miles by anyone's ratification standards, but they mm. still were valid. They got me where I was going. Yeah. Um, could I have done better? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I needed twice the food for the last 10 hours, you know? <laughs> yeah. but who knew? Right, um, right. So but, uh, I want to follow up with you maybe off, offline because I want to yeah, make Sorry, sure don't mean to be, no, no, oh, no, I, no. oh God, good. I didn't even realize the time, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It's, um, it's an interesting point. Um, and I, like I said, I'd like to follow up with you and maybe we can sure. uh, bring something back Absolutely. for another time. But I do want to spend at least uh, five minutes today. So welcome, everybody. <laughs> we had um, an interesting conversation on Tuesday in our, in our Meet the Lane Mates, the little five minutes that we spend um, with each other before we get to talking to our guests, talking about inclusion in marathon swimming. So I think that's what um, Bridge is alluding to. So um, yeah. I do want to follow up on that. I got some awesome um, tips and feedback, and I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with everything, but, um, I, uh, but, I, but it was a start. Um, and today, I wanted to take just five minutes in your Meet the Lane Mates to talk about um, something that maybe you've learned about yourself through the pandemic that you'd like to carry forward. So we'll do that for just um, five minutes and then we'll come back at quarter till and talk to Michelle. <clears throat> Let's see. Ready, set. Oh, Janine's coming in. We'll let Janine come in now from New York before we send everyone off. You're, you're here, Janine, from New York? <laughs> All right, we're yeah. sending you off. Oh, and Elaine's joining too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you there, Elaine? We're about to head off to our Meet the Lane Mates and we're going to talk today about something we learned from the pandemic that we want to carry forward. Ready? Set. Go. No, go. For real this time. <laughs> and all right. Hi, Diane. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh. We have quite a crew today to talk to Michelle Macy. Um, we just shipped everyone off to their lane, their uh, lane mates to go talk about today. We are doing um, the pandemic. What is something you've learned from the pandemic that you want to carry forward? Anything on, on your mind in that regard, Diane? Ah, well, I came back to writing poetry. Um, which oh, that's I awesome. I'm back to. There are a lot of things I, there a lot of my shoulds during the pandemic, which I did not exactly realize, but, um, you know, but I don't know. I, I'm aware that those were shoulds, not things that I wanted to do. And, and uh -huh. I'm that I've returned to the poetry I've started I'm doing a zoom poetry workshop which, that's awesome yeah so I'm really happy about that um and we're back open water swimming we had our first race on Tuesday oh, so great. yes and we can now share we were doing unofficial open water swimming um just between <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where we were
weren't the when the coach said we're not allowed to share them on share on social media. I said now we can we can share and be official and and say we're swimming. So it's very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. I just that's realized. something I should write a poem about too. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, can you hear us? Yeah, for some reason my camera still will not turn on. I've turned on every profile, but it's going right into the meeting and ignoring the settings. That's okay. I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> it's it's nice to be able to see people, but I get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I put the video on for now. I during the interview I sometimes turn it off so that I can focus on the person being interviewed <laughs> yeah. and then get it put it back on if I'm talking yeah we have um just uh, everyone's at least meet the lane mates today at the moment we have a huge crew today um so those of you who just joined in Diane and I were just talking about our the topic for today was something you've learned from the pandemic that you want to carry forward anybody else does have anything they want to chime in with <laughs> Liz Chris no? uh, you know I, I would just say you, you just you got to be careful. You got to be, you know, conscious of everything. It's no sense being stupid and ridiculous, you know. Yeah, you can, that's it. You, you, you can always wait it out. It's not that long. I don't know. But I'm so happy <laughs> to be swimming again. So, I mean, that was kind of, I, I'm careful, but I'm also swimming again, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> I think I've developed some more patience. Ah, that's a good one. I've developed a lot of patience myself, especially yeah. at home with my kids all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've become a better parent, quite frankly. Yeah. Well, that's that's great. Not patient, so good for you. <laughs> I think I've become a better neighbor. Our neighborhood has really rallied around and people have helped each other out. You know, whenever anyone's going to the pet food store, I'll ask everybody else, do you need anything? So that we're not all going and I just love Oh, that's great. So cool. I, I, I thought you, you me that when I was thinking about Little Gifts, my blog post still hasn't come out. And because then when I was about to put it out, then we had all of a sudden a new, uh, uh, the Black Lives Matter, everything started popping up right when I was going to push it out. So now I'm like, what do I do? So anyway, I'm trying to re, 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 yeah, re, re it. Yeah, the, no, we don't uh, do that so much. But I do notice in my neighborhood, People are very cooperative about masks. Uh, I mean, I never see anybody being making a stink about having to wear a mask in a store, um, yeah. like I hear about other places. Yeah, Mark. Anything you learned from the pandemic that you want to bring forward? Oh, good Lord. Um, I just think. Um, keeping in touch with friends. Yeah, I mean, that kind of ties with my current series, but, you know, in the past, I've been able to travel so much that I get to see people, but now I have to keep in touch with people other ways, and I, that helps, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm fortunate in that I have a good training group here, and we've had opportunity to swim open water yeah. since April. Um, <laughs> so I haven't suffered as much as other people. Honestly, I'm waiting for everybody to come back to work because I am never worked this hard and I am exhausted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but I right, hope that we everybody... keep having these discussions on Zoom that um, that you have started. That is really, I've, I've gotten to meet some interesting swimmers as a result of that and, and you know, hear their story firsthand, which is great. So I hope we can, can keep doing that. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it too. I get to talk hey. to my, my swimming idols, like how, who wouldn't want to do that, right? <laughs> um, all right, let's talk to Michelle. Um, I hope you guys had a good conversation. If there's anything is super cool tidbit that you that you um, had from your from your conversation, pass it on. I am trying to get a blog post together about I call them little gifts. Um, 
if there was something from that you learned from the pandemic that you want to carry forward. Um, let's go you know, talk to Michelle. So we always open up, even though people have amazing resumes, I like to hear people um, tell us about themselves for, from their own perspective. So <laughs> Michelle, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, usually my intro is really short. I do, I usually say I'm a marathon swimmer and people ask what that is and I say well that's like swimming a 10k or longer in open water and they're like oh okay <laughs> then the discussion's usually over but um yeah yeah i started uh my first marathon swim was the english channel in 2007 and then from that point on i just sort of fell in love with it which i'm sure is a common theme um for a lot of us here and I went on to do the Triple Crown, so the Catalina and then uh, Manhattan, a uh, little over a year. I finished that in October of 2008, and then um, I've completed the Ocean 7. Um, yeah, just continually try to find adventures, uh, swimming adventures that I can either tag along with people, which um, quite a few people on this call have done that to where they tell me that they're doing something um, fun and I just tag along um, or talk my way into it and uh, just met tons of people. So that's kind of, I mean, I started swimming if you really want like the whole background. I've been <laughs> forever, so I've been competitive swimming since I was nine. Yeah, it's interesting to me to kind of peruse that um, kind of that like were you a lifelong swimmer or, or are you not because we you know we get we get all flavors of marathon swimming and I think it's oh, important yeah, for sure to know that to people to know that you don't necessarily have to you know have been a lifelong swimmer so that's I guess one of my goals with um, marathon swim stories is to help people understand that you know marathon swimmers could come from anywhere there are a lot of us that are lifelong swimmers myself included but yeah. um, but anyway I just I like to like to discuss that a little bit but um tell us about um when did, when, how did you start getting into marathon swimming? What was it like the prompt for that? So I was in the breakout room. I was talking about how I had moved to Portland, Oregon. Um, and I'm a Minnesota girl by nature. And I didn't really know anyone here and figured I needed to find my tribe. So I started swimming again because um, I had taken a break. And then I was... You know, when you're in a new job, they make you take all these training courses um, about how to be a successful employee and all this stuff. And I was in a class that focused achieving your highest priority. And one of the questions was, if you had all the time in the world, what would you do? And I sort of think that they were hoping us to talk about like work related. <laughs> um, but I, and we had to write it down on a post it. And um, I was turning, what was I turning? I must have. Been turning 30 that year or the next year and I just I wrote down that I was in the English channel so 16 months later um I went and did that <laughs> I guess that's how I got into it really and I was swimming two days a week for like 45 minutes each session so I, w I wasn't doing anything earth shattering I was maybe getting three miles a week at the time I signed up for the English channel Wow. Why do you continue to swim marathons? Um, I think there's something about being in the water and doing stuff like that, that just kind of releases you to be your complete authentic self. There's nothing about having to put on a facade. You're literally stripped naked and you've got to figure out what's important to you and you have a lot of time to do that. Um, and for me, just being in the water just kind of re-centers myself. And I guess it, it apparently takes 14 hours for me to do that. You know, a cool session just doesn't do it, so. Yeah, oh, that's great. Um, how do you describe the feeling of completing a marathon swim? Oh. I don't know how to describe the feeling of it. So, I mean, I think it's different with every swim. Sometimes it's just, you're super happy that um, you completed it. Other times you're really just overwhelmed and can't believe it's happened. Um, sometimes I don't even take 
the pause to recognize that I've done and I'm back to work the next day, uh, which I think a lot of us probably are, you know, getting, you know, like, oh, now I have to go check my email and I have to go respond to work or I have to get on this meeting. Um, so real life sort of invades sometimes on that, but I think it goes every which way. You know, I've been sad at finishing marathon swims. Um, you cry, you laugh, you're sort of a whole jumble of stuff. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. I mean, I think it's, I think it's true for any like goal that you set yourself that you end up, you work hard for and you either fail at it because I failed miserably and probably have the most failures as a, a lot of marathon swimmers out there, um, as Forrest Nelson will tell you. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you mentioned failures. I, I guess we had an awesome conversation with Courtney Polk on Tuesday, I forget me in the day. She talked about it not being about it not being failures, which was an awesome an awesome th way to think about it. But since you brought up and you called it failures, tell us about something that you didn't finish and maybe what you learned from it. Oh God, I've not finished a lot of stuff. Um, Any particular I'm ones about okay. it? I'm actually okay calling them failures because you know at the end I didn't complete the goal that was set out at the beginning, uh, but I did learn a lot through it. So um, let's see, what have I failed? <laughs> let's just go with the Ocean Seven. I failed doing uh, multi-crossings of the English Channel. I failed Molokai. I failed the North Channel twice. I failed, uh, God, I've had to go, oh, I've failed Japan. Um, yeah, I pretty much failed every one of the Ocean 7 swims before I completed it. What kinds of learnings did you, did you bring back with you when you went again? Uh, some of them were just dumb, like, you know, rather than trying to push the day, recognize that it's just not the day to swim, whether that's either you're mentally not checked in or the weather's really crappy. Um, when I failed in Japan, it was... The day before we had had four earthquakes and the day that we were swimming was the day of the solar eclipse and it was just all bad juju. <laughs> but, you know, I got in the water and went for it anyway and obviously didn't complete it. Um, sometimes I failed because I was overtrained and my body just couldn't handle it. Um, a few times I failed just through mental um, meltdown. So I think every time you learn more. Uh, so in 2012, I really overtrained. That's when I was trying to become the first woman to complete the Ocean Seven. And I was doing, attempting in a marathon swim um, every three weeks. So I went wow. to Japan in May. I went to the North Channel in June. I went to the English Channel in July. I went back to Japan in August. And then I feel like I went someplace else. And by that time, my body just sort of blew up. Yeah, wow. Can you tell us I about I don't us? recommend that unless you <laughs> have a job. And like a full-time other paying job. If you get paid to do this, good on you and <laughs> go after it. But trying to do a full-time job, pay the bills and all that, and trying to accomplish that was not the smartest thing I've ever done. How has it changed your approach going forward? Uh, well, now I'm not, uh, I don't have quite as big of goals of like trying to be the first for uh, the Ocean Seven. Um, so there's not like this timeline. And additionally, I think there's, uh, there's not the race behind it. So now I'm choosing things to that I hope will bring me joy versus like I'm doing it because I feel some expectation from the outside to do it. Whether it's real or perceived, it's probably more perceived than it is real. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think it's just, I do one or two maybe a year 
and lately over the last five years I haven't done a whole lot mm -hmm. um, I think I'm still sort of recovering from everything before yeah yeah it became Sounds more like of a job than joy so now it's just trying to get back to that joy yeah yeah definitely I can imagine it sounds like you put a lot of pressure on yourself and nobody wants to be in that in that position so um any of us are type b people in this room I mean, when you do marathon swimming or anything extreme whether that's learning a language or learning to cook something or learning you know even running a 10k like running a 10k for me would be something extreme um i think you become you're sort of a type a personality you set these really high expectations for yourself you keep driving and you everything's about that um and sometimes the rest of life you don't have a lot of balance yeah 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 it can get it can get it can I, I can imagine it could be i'm not sure i'm still trying to figure out if i'm a type a or type b person <laughs> but i think there's things i think i was thinking the other day that like there's this surrender that you have to have in marathon swimming to surrender to your crew and i think that that actually kind of appeals to type a people yeah um can you tell us about your the swim you're the most proud of i think it's the first one i think it's the english channel in 2007 because i that's what started me on this journey that's what started me um, where this, this community became my family and that um, I recognized that there was a place that I had sort of felt authentically myself and people accepted that. So it didn't feel like you had to put on airs. Um, I mean, you're rocking up to a beach and all sorts of wobbly bits are all over the place. So it's, <laughs> um, and you're stripping down and you just connect with people in a different way um, when it's like that. And I think that's unique about swimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can you tell us where your favorite place is to swim? Oh, favorite place. I love doing granny swimming anywhere. Where you do you know what I'm talking about? Where you just you may not even put on a swim cap and you put your tie your hair up on the top and you just are like <laughs> heads above the water and you're just I I let my bio preen float me and you're just sort of just experiencing and being in the water and it's not necessarily like you're trying to go anywhere yeah. and you're just watching and letting the water rush over you. So that's pretty much any time I can do that anywhere. It's pretty amazing. Um, I, well, I've been back to the English Channel three times. So I think that speaks volume. There's definitely some in the Ocean 7 that I probably will never go back to. Um, but I've gone back to quite a few places. I really love swimming up in Alaska. The community up there is really amazing. So I've done the Panic Island Challenge quite a few times. Um, they were probably the, my real first intro into the cold water swimming community and they just opened their arms and brought me in and I knew nothing. I mean, nothing. They were talking about hypothermia and I was like, okay, well, what are the signs of that um, before I got in for the race? So that's always hold, held a special place. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, like how you found out about that and what that was like? Uh, thank God for the internet. Um, but so I started, <laughs> I was Ketchikan, Alaska. They have a swim, in, so it's the southeast um, archipelago that's down there. Um, I had signed up for the English Channel, and I was like, well, I probably should see what it's like swimming in cold water and if I can swim farther than, you know, a mile. And um, through some very early Google searching, I, was, I found the Panic Island Challenge and uh, signed up. Uh, and I went up there, gosh, it was a year before my English Channel swim. And Panic Island's an 8.2 mile round island swim in the Tonkas Narrows. And it can be anywhere the, the temperature is incredibly variable. Um, mm -hmm. It just depends on what the currents are doing and what kind of weather they've had. I've been up there and it's been 58 
eight degrees and I've been up there and it's been 54. So, yeah. I, I've, been, I've gone back to that swim like six or seven times. I can't remember how many times. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that looking at your, your swim history, but um, it sounds like it was a really special place. Um, it to... is a really special place. The community just uh, welcomes you in and sort of takes care of you as if you're family. And so you can walk around town and they're like, oh, you're here for the panic and that's so great. And tell me more about yourself. And so it's, um, it's a really great community. Um, uh, how do you adapt to changing conditions? Mm, are we, I mean, any conditions like wind, wave, weather? Uh, you, you're, you get to interpret the question however you like. <laughs> sort of, I, I try never to look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, if it's really nice and flat, which a lot of people say, oh, I don't like swimming when it's nice and flat, it's too boring. Um, one, I think they're lying. Uh, <laughs> two, I, when that's, when the conditions are like that, I sort of have a rule like, please, for the love of God, nobody say what a beautiful day it is because then the weather gods or the current gods or the spirits that be will make it challenging. Um, I think you just go with it. Um, I find it, if it's going to be hard, I almost prefer it to be hard at the beginning and get easier <laughs> because you're, you're like, okay, I'm mentally prepared for this versus having it nice and flat and then having it go choppy on you. But I mean, off swim, you're there for so long <laughs> that you're going to experience it all. I mean, you're going to have a little bit of time where everything feels like it's easy and everything's coming together. And you're going to have times where you're cursing everything that lives and breathes. Um, but the, that's, I think, part of why I love marathon swimming, because it's, it's not consistent. It's not um, a controlled environment. And from one minute to the next, it can be completely different. And I mean, when I, oh, I failed San Juan. San Juan de Fuca, I failed. Um, <laughs> I, there was everything up there. Uh, fog, rain, wind, completely flat, calm, everything. And it was just like, let's get on with it. I failed because it was so foggy, we couldn't see, we got within a mile of land and we couldn't see land. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And we could hear the um, lighthouse and the foghorn yeah. Um, and a boat passed within like 200 meters of us and then we didn't see it. Oh my so gosh. At that point, the boat crew was like, I think we probably should call this for the day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Rightfully so, they should have. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, how do you deal with hard situations? Oh God. Uh, well, my second English channel, I cried the whole swim. The whole swim. Um, and I think that's when you have to really rely on your crew um, to help you and to recognize that if your head's not in it, sometimes your body will carry you through mm. um, and trust that that would happen, even though you're mentally just, uh, the reason I cried the whole swim, my mom had passed away six weeks before I went. So I, wow. My, I had decided to keep, um, uh, we had decided it would be a good thing for me to keep going to the English channel. So I trained, 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 didn't think and didn't process anything that was going on, got into the water and all of a sudden it's like, my mom died. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. So, um, but my sister was on the boat. I had some really good friends on the boat and she just said, okay. Well, then cry it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So that's what I did for 11 hours. <laughs> wow. That's amazing, Michelle. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think you, there's a lot of things you try to, if your brain's not in it, you try to disassociate and let your body do what you've trained it to do. And then you rely so heavily on your crew at that point just to keep you on track. 
um, yeah. which most of the time they do. I mean, they're probably, they're so integral to the success of a swim. Um, and the boat pilot, you just trust that and let your brain do what it's got to do, whether that's crying or cursing or laughing. I mean, I, I have some friends who, they're so fun to watch. They just laugh the whole freaking time. Like every time they come up for a feed, they're laughing, which is amazing. I'm not yeah. like that. I'm, I'm more like in the zone. Well, or not in the zone. <laughs> Um, can you tell us a favorite memory from one of your swims? Favorite memory? Gosh, you know, I think I've gotten to have a lot of experience and I would imagine quite a few of us in this room have had experiences that nobody else will understand. Um, I swam with a pod of dolphins in the middle of the night in Molokai for 45 minutes and they looked like ghosts because of phosphorescence coming off of them. Oh my gosh. Um, I've swam and seen, I don't know what a pod of rays are called, but swim underneath me from Anna Kappa. I mean, there's things that, uh, I swam in a freaking solar eclipse. Yeah, wow. I mean, I didn't succeed, but I swam in a solar eclipse. <laughs> you did, eclipse you did. Japan. Um, I think some of my favorite memories are th like, it, from the swimming is that, where you realize that the world is so much bigger than you and you're getting to participate in such a small micro, you know, you get to experience just a small gift of that, um, of that world. Um, but I think outside of swimming, I mean, just even seeing some of these faces here who are my dearest friends, <laughs> who don't live in Portland, Oregon, who will call each other up and be like, is it time for a swimming vacation? <laughs> Let's go. And we hop on planes from various locations and we meet up and we eat a lot and we swim some, usually less than we always plan to. Um, but the people are so incredible. And that for me is, I think one of the biggest gifts that marathon swimming has brought. Yeah. Yeah. That's been a pretty strong theme throughout the, throughout these interviews is the community. Just, yeah. The community amazing. is amazing. There are, I mean, shoot, Liz Fry. <laughs> I mean, we've been in Patagonia together for crying out loud. And, you know, we go to Austin and swim together and, you know, you can call pretty much any of these people up and be like, I'm having a bad day. And they'll say, have you gone to the pool or let's go? Why don't we plan to meet up in three weeks in wherever and we'll just get together. And whether we swim or not, um, sometimes not the point. Yeah. There's a lot of grainy swimming that happens at that time. <laughs> a lot of procrastinating and chit-chatting and standing in the water. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, uh, what's been the worst part of the pandemic for you? Um, you know, these last five years for me have been a roller coaster, mostly down and up. I think that's partially because I was trying to figure out what my new normal is and what my new life is outside of chasing the Ocean 7 or something like that. Um, so I stopped swimming for a while. I was injured. I was smoking god forbid um sorry if any of you are smokers it's a terrible habit i was smoking for the last five years um so it's just knowing that i was doing a lot of things that weren't healthy for me and right before the pandemic i had started to turn the corner of coming out of that you know i um started working out with a trainer a dry land training um i had started going back to the pool although i I mean, anyone has recommendations for competitive or training suits for big ladies, let me know because I have tried everywhere and I don't know if it's because of these Joe, Joe Lynn suits or whatever, but they've all gotten super, super tiny, not <laughs> tiny here. I'm not tiny. I wore black and I'm hunching my shoulder so I look smaller, but good Lord, they don't get any bigger than a size 40 and I'm over a size 40 right now. <laughs> 
so I can't find suits to get like in the pool. And I'm to the point where I'm like, oh, do I just let it all hang out and wear a sports bra and bike shorts and go for it? Um, but I had started getting back in the pool and um, yeah, trying to find, come back to the tribe that I know will help me mm -hmm. um, and probably not judge me for the fact that I'm got lots more wobbly bits than I had five years ago. And they may look at me and be like, good Lord, what did she eat? <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm trying to, so that was going on before the pandemic hit and the pandemic hit and then the trainer, had, you know, we had to close the gyms, the pools closed. I'm not so good about working out by myself. <laughs> Me either. Kind of, you know, once you commit to someone like, oh, I'll see you at 5 a.m., which why is our sport at always at stupid o'clock? <laughs> always at stupid o'clock. But if you tell someone you're going to be there at 5 a.m., you're like, well, I'm not going to, I told Liz I would be there at 5. I'm going to be there at 5. Um, so I do better with that. So the, the pandemic's been hard. I'm also single, so you don't have a lot of, I mean, there's no real human contact except stuff like this, but it's not, it's connecting, but it's not like, I'm like, I haven't touched a person in like six weeks. And people are like, that sounds so wrong, Michelle. I'm like, but even like shaking hands with somebody or a hug from a friend, you don't realize how much you don't get that, so. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, human touching, no, not bad touching is necessary. I mean, that human connection and like I used to go get massages just to, <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. You can't do that either. Yeah. That sounds so, really hard. Yeah. So the pandemic's been hard for me. Yeah. Thankfully, I still, my job allows me to be able to work from home. So I have been blessed to be still employed, um, which I think is you know, been a huge challenge for a lot of people. Um, and I recognize that I'm blessed to still have my job. And now that it's starting to get spring, it's a little easier to go out and swim. I'm of the mindset of not, sw uh, not swimming alone. I mean, I will, sw uh, in all fairness, I will swim alone when I know that people are out walking the exact place that I'm swimming. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had to wait for a spring for people to be out because nobody, well, and it's COVID, nobody's out. Yeah. So, and I'm not supposed to ask somebody who's not already exposed to me to be like, hey, come get exposed to me so we can do something. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> I'm wondering, uh, we are, uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time. I'm wondering yeah. if anyone else on the call has any other questions for Michelle or comforts for Michelle? Give yourself a hug. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that. I have two dogs. They give me plenty of hugs. Um, <laughs> they're crazy. They keep me busy. But sometimes it's just not the same. It's not the same. It's not the yeah. same as human connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not all bad. Oh, oh. <laughs> where is Sue? There she is. It's hard. It's MF hard. Um, who's gone there? There's other people here who have done this one. There we go. We've got Jamie's done it. I thought it was really hard. It's cold, but the altitude just sucks everything out of you. Um, I felt like I was like an anaconda or a boa constrictor and you had to unhinge your jaw just to try and get as much air in as possible. But um, I do have to say that Christian and uh, Julieta, who organized the swim for through Patagonia Swim, they really take good care of you, really good care of you. They have you come in early to get acclimated. They have you do some swims in different places to get acclimated. So they're doing everything they can to make sure that you're successful. It is incredibly beautiful. Um, it's very um, rustic. Um, it's a pretty uh, economically depressed area. So it, you get a completely different view of the world mm -hmm. and recognize things, but it's incredible. The people, again, the people are so kind and 
giving and everyone text me this these two things please <laughs> from my facebook page because i need them badly um <laughs> Because uh, I don't want to lose them off the chat, so I don't know how to get that. I'll, I'll, I need, I'll get I need it. I'll get it. Okay. I'll get it to you. <laughs> I need these suits. I need the wobbly bits all in. Um, yeah, Tidikak is good. I, it, I don't know how you, I to say to train for it other than because Al, getting up to 13, whatever, a thousand feet is a little bit difficult, but yeah. Um, yeah. So it's. I loved it though. I think it's worth it. The water's incredible. Um, the islands are beautiful. The people, the indigenous people are beautiful. Um, it's just, uh, don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that, that didn't help me at all. Um, but uh, yeah, you're just gonna feel like you've always, well, for me, it would feel like I ran two blocks because I'll be puffing and puffing after two blocks. But so, uh, but I highly recommend it. The uh, Christian and Julieta would take great care of you, but it's an incredibly challenging swim, and it's it's short in comparison to other things. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for that insight. I thought about like Titty Cock. I, I was there once a long, long time ago, and. Um, didn't know anything about open water swimming way before this current life, but um, anyway, it's uh, the it's water is incredibly blue. Back. It's almost like this sapphire blue, right, wow. Jamie? Um, it's so sunny. Well, it was sunny the day of most of the time that I was there. It's incredibly beautiful. That's awesome. Um, what advice would you give to a aspiring marathon swimmer? Don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. Um, definitely rely on the community. They're there to help you. And uh, most, there's so many people who have been there, done that, experienced that. So I think it's recognizing that, I mean, and uh, in some ways I'm almost giving the, this advice to myself right now is like the five years of struggle, I probably could have shortened if I had just reached out to people and recognized that someone there has someone in this group or in the larger community has probably already gone through it mm -hmm. and could either just sit with me and occupy space with me, which is sometimes what you need or um, provide advice when that's needed. Cause it's not like I don't know what I need, like quit smoking. Um, I think uh, leveraging this community and relying on this community, it is a family and everybody, yes, we compete with each other and but for the most part, it's friendly. Um, and I'd say most of us aren't assholes. Um, <laughs> I mean, we have our moments. Elaine, we do. You know it's true. You've met more of us than probably, well, for sure me. <laughs> I'm sure you can sit there and be like, yeah, that person's an asshole. But most yeah. of us are really not. Um, <laughs> oh, and save shit tons of money. Ooh, I shouldn't, you're recording this. It's really expensive. <laughs> it's really expensive. It's so expensive. And the last thing is like, make sure you have your family on board because you're going to, almost every waking moment that you, you know, you're going to work, you're going to eat, you're going to swim and you're going to sleep. So a lot of those other relationships are, can suffer unless people are on board. Like my friends, we would go to dinner at four, you know, at the blue hair time, the 4.30 at night because I needed to eat. But they also knew I went to sleep at like eight so that I could get up at four to get to the pool to do a couple of hours before I work. So you do lose some of those friendships um, from people that just don't get it um, or don't understand the kind of lifestyle that you're choosing to leave, live. So I think that's some of the advice. Yeah. But you got all these people, so it's pretty freaking amazing. Our extended family, right? <clears throat> what? Um, who should be a future guest on Marathon Swim Stories? I do know Claudia Rose very well, actually. We've swam quite a bit together. 
Um, she and I swam a lot together in our earlier uh, career and spent a lot of time in actually Alaska together because she sent the Sitka swim up there. Is it Gia? Ah. Um, so, uh, what was my last question? Oh, I was just asking if oh, there was Darren a future. Miller. So Judy wants to see Darren Miller. <laughs> okay, anybody you can think of. <laughs> um, have you reached out to Patty Bauer and find? Mm -mm. Just send me that. She's she's the one who I was talking about laughs the whole swim. Her mm. energy and her vibe and is pretty phenomenal, and she's just. She really provides a great energy when you need it. Um, so she's one I would consider. Um, down in Australia, do you know Barbara Pellick? Mm -mm. So she's, uh, I've done a relay with her. She is the woman who is the queen of the Rottnest Channel. Mm. So okay. more quiet. Uh, you don't hear about her as much and she doesn't post a lot on Facebook, but gosh, she's genuine and lovely. And I mean, it looks like Judy has everybody who you need to be with. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've got a long list, but I would like to hear, I, I hear from people. I think there's some people. great people. Um, Maureen McCoy over in Northern Ireland. She's written a book called Wild Swimming Ireland. Um, she's lovely. Uh, and uh, she might not be what a lot of people are like, like a Jamie Monaghan and Lane, you know, uh, she, but she does, she swims in her own backyard. You know, she's done the English Channel and she's done quite a few relays. Um, so some of these people are like my dearest friends. Um, yeah. Uh, so when you look at, yeah, and she teaches swimming lessons to the kids there and gets them involved in the open water. She, yeah, That's she's lovely. good. Okay. Um, I'm, I could probably, I mean, you've interviewed a lot of the ones that are already on this. Yeah, these guys on here. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I, there's quite a few out there. Uh, Lynn Smith, Lynn, uh, no, sorry, Lynn Driscoll. <laughs> I met her before she was married. Um, she's got a unique perspective. She swam the English Channel. She's now in, and she's done Chesapeake Bay and just all around good person. Lovely. Thank you for the recommendations. Yeah, and don't forget uh, Judy. She had a whole bunch. Yeah, yep, I got it. Some of those I, yep. I've got a long list. I've been busy I mean, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, but thankfully we all pretty much know each other. <laughs> it's a long list, but we all know each other. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, thank you so much, Michelle. It's, yeah, my um, pleasure. This has been fun, you guys. I think how many time you want to wake up at 5.30 on Tuesday or Thursday, we're, we're here. <laughs> yeah, it's the stupid o'clock thing. <laughs> well, my dogs get up at five, so it is, I am up, but um, yeah. I'm going back to bed after this. I don't yeah. know. You guys coasters have to go to work. I've got another three hours before that has to happen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your perspective and your honesty and everything. I love yeah, it. Yeah, thanks so much, you guys. It's good to see you all. Yeah. Love you.